up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 subaru outback courtesy of apple subaru in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because of course subaru's legendary all-wheel drive system symmetrical all-wheel drive system i should say also they have incredible resale value and the outback traditionally is quite spacious it's ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so when it comes to pricing for the new 2024 outback this is going to have a heck of a range ranging from 28,895 for the lowest trim to 42,795 dollars for the highest trim so rather than me ramble off all of these prices i'm simply going to put a nice chart for you on the screen but as you can imagine with all of those trim levels there are a couple different engine configurations for the 2024 outback first one belonging to all of the non-xt trim levels that one is powered by a 2.5 liter four cylinder boxer engine putting out 182 horsepower at 5800 rpm 176 pound feet of torque coming in at 4400 rpm that power sent to all four wheels through subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system power sent to the ground through a linear tronic cvt zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.7 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 26 in the city 32 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration of course belonging to the xt trim levels that one is powered by a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder boxer engine putting out 260 horsepower at 5600 rpm 277 pound-feet of torque coming in at 2000 rpm power sent to all four wheels through a cvt zero to 60 time approximately 5.8 seconds with mpg numbers then coming in at 22 in the city 29 on the highway but again taking regular unleaded fuel all right so before we test out the paddle shifters the first I want to mention to you guys there is a full paddle shift mode if you will simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left it's actually going to display what uh gear you're in up on the digital portion of the gauges here and having said that i think we have a little bit of a straightaway here i got it in first gear and three two one yo All right, so the paddle shifters are pretty darn quick and I like how it didn't kind of shift for me when I kind of winded out the RPMs. I think that's pretty clever as well. But having said that, it still does feel like a, like a CVT, a continuously variable transmission when you're shifting through the gears. So it's kind of simulated shifting, but still they are quite fun and they're there for you if you needed them. But anyways, now that we got that all of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find one more straightaway. I'm gonna slide the shifter back to the right here that gives back full control to the Outback. And let's now put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Outback here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one, go. Not bad from the get-go there. Tell it's a CVT. It's okay. It's not the very quickest acceleration out there, but you should get the job done for sure. So not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway, but yeah, it's not the quickest thing out there, but like I said, it'll get the job done. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. So when it comes to braking of the 2024 Outback, of course, coming standard will be four wheel ventilated disc brakes. All right, so as far as braking feel goes, as we are pulling up to this stop sign here, it's actually been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today. It's definitely not a firm braking feel, but it's not a soft braking feel either. It's kind of like, it's kind of like that just right braking feel for the Outback, quite honestly. So I haven't had any issues, no dead spots or anything like that. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. Definitely absorbing Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely. Let's go ahead and hit this manhole real quick. Yeah, it's fine. But definitely no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, that is 100% on the looser side of things, which is to be expected for the Outback. It's not a sports car. You shouldn't expect a heavy steering feel like a WRX or something, but it's definitely on the looser side. Wouldn't have minded if they uh, maybe made even a, a steering responsive driving mode where it kind of gave a heavier weight to the steering. That's probably what my preference would be for this thing. But yeah, it's definitely on the looser side of things. As far as cabin noise goes, now that 
that's been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today so i personally haven't had any issues there not a whole lot of road or wind noise coming into the cabin so that's 100 on point taking a look out my rear view mirror touching on visibility a little bit i can see 100 perfectly fine out the back so that is definitely not going to be an issue either and rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on the outback as well but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Subaru Outback. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Subaru Outback. As always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number four, indicating that the new 2024 Outback is built and assembled here in the U.S., at least for U.S. customers. The four indicates specifically it's going to be Indiana, I guess. So that's pretty cool. But before we continue on, I'm doing things a little bit differently in this review. So let me know in the comment section if you like this new style slash format, whatever you want to call it. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Front fascia is going to differ slightly depending upon the trim level that you go with. You got this matte black front cladding here on the front lip. LED headlights with LED daytime running lights, of course. You do get the automatic feature with that as well. You also, though, get automatic high beams, which essentially means if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams. So definitely a very convenient feature there for you. Also though, fog lights, and these aren't even halogen bulbs, these are full LED fog lights down below here, so added illumination at night there. But my very favorite part about most Subarus that I think like 90% of other manufacturers don't do is about the headlights. These are actually LED steering responsive headlights. So what does that mean? It essentially means when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle, better help illuminating what is around that bend. So you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or a squirrel or a chipmunk or that's all the animals I can think of right now or a pedestrian for that matter or a cyclist. So it's definitely a plus for visibility at night and really it's a safety feature in itself. So that is pretty darn cool, but that pretty much rounds out the front. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the new Outback, first thing I want to mention starting up top here, you do have these very heavy duty roof rails. Subaru does roof rails like no other manufacturer out there. They're super beefy. Rear privacy glass does come standard, touching on the side mirrors. They're going to be body colored or gloss black, depending upon the trim level that you go with. They are power adjustable, of course, and you do get LED integrated turn signals as well. So that's pretty cool. But one of my favorite parts about the new Outback is really, they've been doing this for a while, but I love the Outback lettering found in the side skirts there. That's something, like I said, Subaru has been doing for a long time with the Outback. It really distinguishes itself from the other Subarus. You do have some matte black cladding found in the side skirts as well as just around the fenders there. And there are gloss black 18 inch alloy wheels that's specific to the Onyx trim level. And of course they are gonna differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the Outback here, first thing I wanna mention, you do have a matte black shark fin antenna all the way to the top. Just below that rear spoiler with the integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. You do have these LED C-shaped taillights back here that definitely looks good. As far as the badging goes back here, it's gonna be finished in gloss black since we have the Onyx Edition trim level, that makes sense. It's not gonna apply for all trim levels, of course, but that looks pretty darn good. And just underneath of it all, you will actually find a single exhaust outlet to under here on this side. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, you guys, and so now since we are around still to the back of the Outback here, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free power tailgate, which is pretty darn convenient if you have your hands full of groceries or kids or whatever the case, but there is a button on the key fob. You can use that as well, and there's also a button on the trunk itself any of those options is going to open it up for you. But once opened up, you actually do have quite a bit going on back here though. First thing I wanna mention, there's a 12 volt power outlet right there. You guys probably aren't gonna be able to see it with this view, but it's there. You got some netted storage found over there. You also have some uh, grocery bag hooks. The cool thing about these is you just press the top and they open up for you. So I like that those are there as well. You also have some tie down anchors there. Of course, you also have this cargo cover, which is gonna lock in place. And it actually looks like it has an upper level as well. So that is pretty darn cool. I like how that works. Also, you have this Harman Kardon rear subwoofer back here. We're gonna be testing out the sound system in a little bit. So don't go anywhere for that. And let's see what's underneath of the cargo floor. 
You have a good bit of in-floor storage and it looks like you have a jack for uh, changing your spare tire. So it's gonna be a spare tire as opposed to the inflator kit, which I personally prefer. But now let me go ahead and actually put down the rear seats here. Let's see how much cargo space we have. By the way, real quick, to fold these rear seats down, there's actually levers found in the cargo area, which makes it super easy. All right, so somebody requested this once. They wanted to see how much space was in the cargo area. So they wanted to see if I had enough room to sleep in it. Now my feet are actually touching the front seats here. I'm kind of fully extended. My legs aren't bent in or anything, but this is essentially how much space I have. There is still a little bit of space there. So I can imagine you could put a pillow right here and be completely fine just without this uh, cargo cover being right there. I, I wouldn't think that would be very comfortable. But yeah. All right, so we're now making our way up to the rear leg room. This, by the way, is me sitting behind my own driving position. So decent amount of leg room there and the uh, headroom is fine as well. So perfectly fine with that. You also have a rear center armrest with cup holders, which is pretty cool. Got rear ventilation as well. You have a USB-A and USB-C charging port. So that is pretty cool that both options are there. And this is a funky little uh, seat bat map pocket ordeal here. You got a big pocket, you got a littler pocket, and another medium sized pocket. So it's like the three little bears, but on the back of your front seat. That's pretty cool. So now making our way up to the front seats here, they are power adjustable. I loved that. And this is actually StarTex water repellent upholstery that we have in our Onyx trim level. And it kind of looks like it would be water repellent quite honestly, but I tell you what, I love the green stitching found on the seats and they are some of the most comfortable seats I've actually sat in in quite a while. And I didn't expect to say that hopping in a Subaru quite honestly. Typically I say that in Lexus and Mercedes Benz and BMW, but I didn't expect that in the Subaru Outback here. These are incredibly comfortable seats. They're bolstered well, and like I said, they are plenty adjustable, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel because this is what really, really impressed me because a lot of times it won't be as telescoping as I would want it to be. So let me show you guys right here. This is very telescoping when it comes to the steering wheel. It kind of impressed me more telescoping than most of the other vehicles that I reviewed and I've reviewed over 700 of them at this point. So if you're a six foot seven to seven foot individual like myself, this should be perfectly fine. This car is made for taller individuals, not seven feet tall, by the way, I'm just kidding. But anyways, I do like that. And I like the lime green stitching within the steering wheel as well. That was definitely a nice touch. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. But let me try to show you guys the key here real quick as well. Essentially, all of your buttons on one side, you got lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear tailgate there. But the unlock button is gonna be the Subaru logo, by the way. But it is all keyless entry with the push button start. So I'm just gonna put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button. So now let me show you guys the gauges as I walk you through this here real quick. Tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side of the screen, but gives you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's safety information, radio information, pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital screen there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. I love the power sunroof in this thing. I also like the overhead sunglass holder. That is pretty cool. We do have a uh, rear view mirror with a compass found in the upper right hand corner. That is nice as well. And homely controls to up to three different garage doors. I do like this little shelf on the passenger side as well. It's kind of kind of rubberized bottom to it so things don't slide around. Again, you got the lime green contrast stitching. Just in front of the shifter, you got more rubberized storage. You can put your cell phone there, USB charging port, USB-A and USB-C, and then an auxiliary port. Electromechanical parking brake right there as well. You got your dual cup holders just behind the shifter. And within the center armrest, there's a couple different compartments, go figure. Uh, there it is. So you got a decent amount of storage in there, 12 volt power outlet, and like I said, a couple different compartments. But Overall, interior quality is perfectly fine. I mean, as far as the, it actually is better than I expected. You have this nice soft touch material on the doors and there's really not a whole lot of hard plastics on the doors. That's usually where manufacturers try to save money, but that definitely worked out pretty darn good in this one. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. That's gonna be the home button. That is essentially was what we're on right now. But as far as quickness goes to this thing, there's a little bit of a delay. I've seen quicker systems, but this will get the job done. You got a little bit of the car info up there, which is pretty cool. You got your elevation and your angles and stuff like that. Also have Bluetooth and audio streaming, of course, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Also have your radio information up here. And like I said, we do have a Harman Kardon sound system with us here today. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and skip to that. We find a good station here and let's go ahead and test out the clarity that we have on our Harman Kardon sound system with us here today. On the other side. Yeah, that is dang good, ton of bass ton of clarity, ton of loudness. That sound system is 
pretty darn incredible if I do say so myself. And by the way, there is a car icon at the bottom here too. That's where you can adjust your, if you want the steering responsive headlights, there's also X mode where you can choose snow and dirt, normal or deep snow and mud. Most Subarus come with that nowadays as well. I forgot to mention that earlier. So that is pretty darn cool. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, of course, is when you do put the Outback in reverse, you will find that rear view camera coming standard across the board, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so as with all Subarus, the new Outback is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. You got Subaru EyeSight, which essentially is all the advanced safety that comes with Subaru. It comes with automatic emergency steering, reverse automatic braking. There's a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and pretty much all of the other advanced safety that you would expect to find on a Subaru. All right, and so when it comes to my final thoughts of the new 2024 Subaru Outback, it has a lot going for it. It's a very comfortable vehicle, incredibly comfortable seats, very convenient if you're a taller individual because of that telescoping steering wheel that telescoped out further than probably most vehicles that I review these days. Also incredible safety. It's an IIHS top safety pick plus. It doesn't get any better than that. You got the steering responsive headlights that usually you don't find in the majority of other vehicles out there, even luxury vehicles for that matter. Overall, it was a very comfortable ride. It's nothing that's gonna really blow you away in terms of acceleration or driving dynamics, but that's not what the vehicle was actually built for. It's built to comfortably get you from point A to point B, including that incredible symmetrical all-wheel drive system. It doesn't get any better than that when it comes to all-wheel drive. That's been tested by the way, it's not just my opinion. So ultimately, if you're looking for something that is going to get you to and from work comfortably and get you through the snow at the same time as we quite often get here in Pennsylvania, this is definitely a solid option. But let me know what you guys think of the new Outback in the comments section below. And let me know what you think of this new format as well. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold